Welcome once again to Our Lady of the Assumption Church in Windsor, Ontario. Today, as we continue this video series on the art and architecture of our church building, we want to spend some time looking at the symbolism present in the stained glass windows in our church. Throughout the history of the church, stained glass windows have served a dual purpose. In addition to allowing light to enter the building, many stained glass windows contain ornate depictions of biblical stories. These depictions served as a way of teaching the faithful lessons about sacred scripture and the faith, especially since before modern times, many of the faithful could not read or did not have access to a Bible of their own. Many of the windows in Assumption Church are not as ornately decorated as windows in other churches. However, these windows still contain rich symbolism and remind us of the truths of our faith. Our tour of the stained glass windows begins right as we enter the church. Over the main entrance to the church, a window depicts the four evangelists, St. Matthew, St. Mark, St. Luke, and St. John. This reminds us that the four gospels written by these four evangelists are the pillars on which our faith stands. The Holy Spirit, the source of inspiration for sacred scripture, is also depicted in the form of a dove. This depiction of the Holy Spirit reminds us of the Spirit's guidance of the church throughout the centuries. Over the inner doors of the main entrance, the Holy Family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph is depicted. This reminds us not only that Jesus was fully human and fully divine, it also reminds us of the importance of the family in the Christian life, since the family is the first place where children are instructed in the faith. The windows in the main body of the church are all decorated with different patterns, which make up the majority of the glass in the window. However, at the top of each window, a series of different symbols are found in the glass. It is these symbols that convey important lessons about our faith. All told, there are 16 windows in the body of the church, four on the back wall and 12 on the side walls, six on each side. Beginning at the back of the church, we see the sacred heart of Jesus depicted at the top of the first window. This image serves as a sign of God's love for all humanity and reminds us of Christ's willingness to undergo his passion for our sake. The lower window depicts the papal tiara, a symbol of the Pope's authority over the entire Catholic Church. This reminds us not only of our connection to the Holy Father, but also of our connection to all people of faith who together make up the body of Christ. On the opposite side at the back of the church, we see the Immaculate Heart of Mary depicted. Mary's heart, as shown here, is pierced through with the sword of sorrow that Simeon foretold when Jesus was presented in the temple. This heart is a sign of Mary's love for her son, Jesus, and of her compassionate love for all people. The image of the papal tiara is again repeated in the lower window on this side of the church. As we now move forward through the church, we will look at each of the six pairs of windows in turn. Beginning at the back of the church, the symbol of a winged man holding a scroll is depicted. This symbol, which comes from the book of Ezekiel and the book of Revelation, is the symbol used to represent the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew's Gospel is a very human Gospel. It begins with Christ's genealogy and focuses on his human nature. Matthew's Gospel reminds each of us that we are called to use our human reason on the path to salvation. Opposite this window, we see a winged lion depicted the second of the four winged beasts from Ezekiel and Revelation. This image represents the Gospel of Mark. 
The lion represents courage, the kingship of Christ, and is also a symbol of Jesus' resurrection from the dead. Mark's Gospel reminds us that we should be courageous on the path of salvation. Moving forward to the next set of windows, we see the symbol of a winged ox, the third winged beast described in Ezekiel and Revelation. The ox symbolizes the Gospel of Luke and represents service, sacrifice, and strength, which are all important themes in Luke's Gospel. Luke's Gospel reminds us that we should be prepared to make sacrifices of ourselves in order to follow Christ faithfully. On the opposite side, the image of an eagle, the last of the four winged beasts in Ezekiel and Revelation, is depicted. The eagle represents the Gospel of John and reminds us that John's Gospel soars over the others in terms of its development of theology. The Gospel of John places heavy emphasis on Jesus' divine nature and reminds us to look to eternity without flinching as we journey toward our goal of union with God. Moving forward to the next set of windows, the Holy Spirit is again depicted in the form of a dove. Once again, this reminds us of the power of the Spirit of God given to us at baptism and ever-present in our lives as inspiration and guide. On the opposite side, a symbol for the Holy Trinity is depicted. This abstract symbol is a visual representation of our belief that God is a trinity of persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, who share one divine substance. This belief in the triune God is the core of the faith which we profess every Sunday in the Creed. Moving to the next set of windows, we see depicted the crown of thorns, the nails, and the sign that hung on Christ's cross when he was crucified. These symbols remind us of the cost that Christ paid for our salvation. Turning to the opposite side, we see an image of the cross set inside an ornate crown. This image reminds us that although there are trials in this life, a rich reward awaits us in heaven after those trials have concluded. Moving forward to the next set of windows, the image of a lamb that has been slain is depicted. This image reminds us of the Passover lamb in the Exodus account, whose blood anointed the doorposts of the Israelites as a sign for the angel of death to spare the firstborn of that house. It also reminds us of a passage from the book of Revelation, which speaks of the Lamb of God who was slain and whose blood takes away the sins of the world. Opposite from this image, we see the same Lamb of God depicted, but this time risen in victory. This depiction also comes to us from the book of Revelation and reminds us of the faith that we have in Jesus Christ, who is risen from the dead. Moving forward to the last set of windows in the main body of the church, we see depicted a column with cords winding around it. This image reminds us of the scourging of Jesus during his passion. Jesus would have been chained to the column while the Roman soldiers beat him with the scourges or whips. This is yet another reminder of the price that Christ paid for our salvation. Across from this window, we see a depiction of the Arma Christi. This symbol is a depiction of the arms or weapons that Christ used to win our salvation. We see present in this symbol the cross, the inscription placed on the cross, the reed with a sponge, which was used to give Christ the wine mixed with gall, and the nails which pierced his hands. We also see the hammer used to drive the nails, the pincers used to remove the nails, and the soldier's lance, which was thrust into Christ's side after his death. The heart at the center of this image reminds us that Christ's death on the cross was a supreme act of love for all of humanity. 
As we enter the sanctuary of the church, three scenes from the life of Christ are depicted in the windows behind the high altar. These scenes are the Annunciation, when Christ became incarnate in the womb of the Virgin Mary, the Crucifixion, when Christ died on the cross for our sins, and the Resurrection, when Christ rose from the dead, victorious over sin and death. Above the windows in the sanctuary, another series of symbols is present in the stained glass. The first symbol depicted is the image of a pelican with her young gathered around her. Pelicans are incredibly attentive to their young, and if no other food is available, a mother pelican will wound her breast so that her children can be nourished by her blood. For this reason, the pelican has become a symbol of the passion of Christ, as well as a symbol of the Eucharist, Christ's own flesh and blood given to us for our salvation. The next symbol depicted is the monstrance, the vessel used for adoration and benediction of the Blessed Sacrament. The monstrance draws attention to the King of Kings, Jesus Christ, present in the Eucharist in a real and substantial way under the appearance of bread. This ornate vessel is a reflection of the divine mystery it holds and reveals. The next symbol is another depiction of the Arma Christi, which includes many of the same symbols in the other depiction present in the church, including the cross, the lance, the sponge on the reed, the hammer, the nails, and the pincers. In this depiction, we also see the ladder used to remove Christ's body from the cross, as well as the veil of Veronica, which contains the image of the holy face. The next symbol is the chalice, the vessel used for the consecration of the precious blood at Mass. The chalice, together with the ciborium which is depicted in the next window, serve as reminders of the importance of the Eucharist in the Christian life. These symbols also remind us of the Last Supper, at which Christ instituted the Holy Eucharist. There is one more stained glass window in Assumption Church, one which is rarely seen due to its location in the bell tower. This window, known as an oculus, depicts the Assumption of Mary into heaven. Revelation chapter 12 is the basis for this depiction. She is a woman clothed with the sun, as evidenced by the rays coming out from behind her. She also has the moon at her feet and a crown of 12 stars on her head, a reminder that Mary is queen of heaven. The angels surround Mary as she is taken up to heaven. We hope that you have enjoyed this look at the symbolism of the stained glass windows in Assumption Church. Our next video will look at the statues and carvings present in the church. Until then, may God continue to bless you and keep you safe.